Dan, I thought today maybe let's just let's just chat about something uh, we all experience, and I think that's that's definitely a cluttered mailbox. But I don't I don't think that specifically is a problem. It's it's usually the the sneaky phishing emails that that come in as a result of that. And I think we've all come across you know emailers where your boss is asking for your credentials or asking for you to do something urgently. Um, or even those those fake password reset emailers, but I think the thing is we often laugh at these with these attempts. But like we've said before, and we've spoken about it before, but scammers actually go for these type of people, the the gullible people. And I think really my question to you is why why do scammers go for these type of people, and um, why do people fall victim to these scams? Yeah, so. I mean, this is changing now, and we, we, we'll get on to that. But traditionally, your scammers would try and, you know, let's use a phishing analogy. Um, they would try and throw a big enough net to cover as many potential targets. The bigger that net that they throw, the more likelihood they are going to actually catching, catching some victims. So then what they would have to do is make those emails that they send out as part of those phishing scams or those phishing campaigns as generic as possible, uh, firstly, so that it could cover the widest number of, of potential victims. That's why a lot of the times, you know, those those phishing emails in your mailbox are so obvious because they're just super generic. They look retarded. But then what, what they'll also do is they'll they'll put in grammar errors and they'll put in spelling errors because when they're casting that massive net, if you're able to spot that spelling error or you're able to spot that grammar error very carefully, you've got a very quick attention to detail, you're immediately going to delete that. And they don't want you as a target then because you're going to spot their scam. So they don't want to waste any time dealing with you and, and following up with you. What they want are those victims or those potential targets that are not going to spot their spelling mistakes or not going to spot their grammar, not going to spot the, the mistakes that they've built in on purpose to try and identify who the easy gullible targets are. So that's that's a lot of the time why we laugh about it, but they actually do it for a reason. The scammers are actually doing that for, for a reason. So that that's why we'll, we'll come across either really generic emails or emails with, with mistakes in as well. There, there, there's, a, there's a purpose to it. And yeah, like Dan, you just mentioned a couple of examples right now, but are there any more examples or things or red flags rather to look out for when when you try to spot a phishing attack phishing attacks you know anytime you get anything in your mailbox you know number one always having a look at at the sender you know if if what the sender name is is not matching the email address that it's supposed to be coming from um it's a red flag if there's spelling or grammar mistakes you know again another red flag you know it's it's obviously if there are grammar mistakes, maybe just your friend or your colleague or the person you're working for is just useless at spelling. So, you know, it, it's not the be all and end all, but it's always something to, to look out for. And if you do see it, you know, just take pause. Um, generic emails, generic greetings, um, you know, dear customer, that sort of stuff. Again, We've spoken about why it's generic, why they need to do that. It is a red flag. Some companies still do it. You know, some companies have got terrible bloody marketing or terrible, you know, support. Um, and they will have, you know, generic greetings. Um, so while it's a red flag, it's not the be all and end all. And we talk about generic emails. We talk about these misspellings and grammar. We talk about phishing, needing to make it as generic as possible for the wider um, audience or wider possible target net. This is all changing now with the introduction of, of AI and the use of AI and the, the more prevalent use of AI by scammers and, and hackers. So while a few years ago, they would need to make these emails as generic as possible to match every single person out there, it, it wouldn't need, it would, they wouldn't be able to make it personal. They wouldn't be able to make it um, sort of customized to each target because they, they're costing it too wide. Um, for it, but with the use of AI and different programs now, and the way that the the scammers are going about this now, they are making these phishing attacks 
um, a lot more targeted, a lot more convincing, and they're able to push that out to a massive volume now of, of victims. And so what we're seeing is these targeted attacks, almost spear phishing attacks at volume now are coming in using the use of, of, of AI. So, you know, the days of misspellings or the days of grammar or the days of generic greetings are, are maybe behind us. And we're actually going to see, you know, you're getting called out by your name. You're getting, you know, there may be referencing stuff that you've used on social media now because all of this can be well researched beforehand and then they can craft the perfect email for you. So we're looking for the old red flags, but again, you know, we, we're aware now that these are getting much, much crafted, much more difficult to spot, much more targeted to the individual because of AI. So it's something else we need to be aware of. Um, but something that applies to everything, doesn't matter how generic it is or how targeted it is or how personalized it is, anytime that you have an urgent request, anytime that there's exclamation marks, urgent request, if you don't do this, this is going to happen, red flag should go off here. Okay, and if you get that in the email, it it should immediately put you know put you at alert um, that something's up. And you know a lot of the times, you know, most companies are not going to use that type of language. And then finally, you know any request for any type of sensitive information, whether that is information requests like we want your password, we need your one time PIN, we need your card details, we need you know, we need you to do a money transfer or we need your ID documents. Anytime that that is like that is it, it should be suspicious to you. It should, you know, a lot of companies are never going to ask for that via email for a start. Um, so, you know, those are your red flags you want to be looking out for in, in potential phishing emails. Cool, Dan. And I think a big well, we've spoken about phishing emails in the past and in previous episodes, but I think what's really important for the audience to understand is what specifically to do when they do encounter a phishing email. And do you maybe have some, some tips on what to do once they are encountered with this, either in their personal life or at, in the workplace? Yeah, sure. It's, I mean, it's, it's one thing to be able to spot an email. And I, I think that's a big, big focus for, for today's podcast is, mm -hmm. is talking about this, you know, if you see something say something you know for keeping keeping everyone safe especially in the in a business environment where, where you're with colleagues and you're part of an organization it's it's really important to shout out about it a lot of your colleagues um a lot of your co-workers maybe not as switched on to these red flags as you and you know they won't see it they will download that attachment they'll click on that thing they'll give away that information that they really shouldn't have but you know, if you spot it early and you're able to spot it, instead of just deleting it, actually report it. It it helps. It's not just the IT team's problem. It's not just the security team's problem. Like everyone can help with this. And this is reporting suspicious behavior, reporting suspicious um, emails, reporting suspicious messages is one of like the key things that every single employee can do in an organization. And so that's something that really should be driven home um, for, for everyone. So most email platforms now will have a report feature on it, whether you're using Google or Microsoft or whatever your email platform is. Um, they'll have a report, report phishing, report spam. Um, you may have a plugin that you can use to report phishing, or you may your company may set up a sort of report email or reporting mailbox for phishing. And so you can forward that immediately to that mailbox so that your IT team will receive that, the security team will receive that, and then they can go to work doing their business. You've done your job. You've spotted it early. You've let them know. They can now go and start blocking that email, blocking that domain, making sure that it's cleaned out from the organization, but they need you to spot that early. So reporting using your your email client report buttons forwarding onto onto mailboxes is really really important there um inform your it team okay um maybe it's something you're just suspicious over maybe you, you're not certain um, maybe it's something you've received on your personal device you know, let your it team know but ask them questions you know report it to them just go listen i'm not sure about this 
they're never going to, you know, say that you're a moron. And that's very obviously, you know, a business email, um, you know, let them know. They will appreciate you getting involved, you reporting, you being switched on over it. So report it to the IT team. Um, and, you know, if you receive something, don't be afraid, you know, to give a friend a call. You know, if you're not sure, ask somebody. If you can't get hold of your IT team or you don't have an IT team and, and it's in a personal personal circumstance, you know, phone a friend, ask somebody, hey, have a look at this. What do you think about this? Does this look scammy? Um, I get it all the time, you know, from from friends, um, from family. She's, my mom will love to send me screenshots of emails that she's got. She's like, does this look, I'm like, yes, that is a scam. <laughs> Delete it and go nowhere near it, please. Um, so, it's it's not about just deleting stuff out of your mailbox. It's about letting other people know so that they can do their jobs around it. It's about keeping other people safe who might not have spotted this as well. And it's just about helping educate other people as well. So if you see something, say something. And, and keeping everyone safe is really important when it comes to phishing emails. 100%, Daniel. I think this whole podcast series is about building uh, cyber savvy behaviors. And I think, like you mentioned, it's it's not just one department's job, it's actually the entire organization that needs to work together to fight this. Um, and like you mentioned, if you don't do anything about it, your colleagues could fall victim and that brings the entire company down. So yeah, see something, say something. And yeah, very catchy. Cool, Dan, that's, uh, that's all we have time for today. Unless you have anything else to add, um, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, Ace, thanks very much.